QLC Plus MIDI controllers. So I said I was going to make a video about using MIDI controllers to control the virtual console in QLC Plus, and here it is. Um, so the benefits of this is uh, if you don't like using a touchscreen computer or mousing around on all your uh, sliders and that, you can actually use a controller, like a MIDI controller, as a tactile surface. So I picked the Nano Control 2 because we have a variety of buttons, sliders, and rotary knobs. So we'll show you how you can connect this in to use into the system here. First of all, let's go to Input Outputs. Um, we can see by looking up here that we have the input, Nano Controller 2. One interesting feature here is if I press any of the buttons, you'll see a little joystick come up here which is telling me that QLC Plus is rece receiving MIDI information from this controller. And I can see down here that I've selected Nano Control 2, so that is our input. If we go to the Nano Control 2, we look at Profile here, and this is Nano Control 2, my version. And what I've done is I've taken some time ahead of time and gone in and programmed the different channels. So I select that, say Edit, look at my channels, I'm going to sort by channel over here by clicking on the channel button. And you can see that when I move my slider, and this is slider number one, that would be this one right here, you can see that it lights up with MIDI information. And slider two, which would be this one, and then slider three, you can see how it lights up, and so on across there. Uh, buttons. So I call this my reverse button. If I press that one, you can see that the reverse lights up here. My forward button my stop button, you can see how that's lighting up, my play button, and my record button. So I've gone ahead and created this whole profile because there's two different ways that we can connect this to the controls in the virtual console and I'll show you how to do that. But before we do that, so I've done this profile. If you have a MIDI controller that there's no profile for it up here, you can simply go ahead and create your own profile. And we'll do that right now. It's really, really easy to do. We'll just say, I'm going to click on None up here to begin with, and then I'm going to say, I want to add a profile. I'm going to call this Generic, and model number is going to be XX00, and I'm going to click the Channel button. Now, here's the neat feature about this. We're going to click the wizard, the wizard, the wand over here. Click that, so now we're enabled. It gives you this little message. I'm going to click OK. Now, any button I press comes up, and it tells me that this is going to be assigned to channel 129. Press another button. It's going to be assigned to the channel. When this comes up, I can double click on this, give it a name so that I know what this button is doing. And it's telling what kind of controller it is. So you can go through and then just go ahead and map your entire controller this way. Um, I'm going to move a slider. See it comes up and it says it's a slider. Again, just double click it. You can name what, whatever you want to call that slider. I'm going to turn a rotary knob. It's calling a slider, but I can go in, double click that, and I'm going to call this a knob or encoder, one or the other way. And now it's called that. It's called slider 9. Again, I could have called this knob 1, whatever I want to call it, and it's called knob 1. And when I move that knob 1, now you can see that I'm getting MIDI information from that. Okay, so it's that easy. So if you want to take some time, you can go through and do a profile for your particular device. And then when you're all done, just click the wizard, you're done, and click OK. And then your device will appear down here, generic XX00, and we've actually created our own profile for that. Okay? Um, go back to mapping, though. Again, it's going to depend whatever your device is that comes in here. Hopefully, it'll show up and you put a check mark by it. So, all right, so we've got the profile created, and we've got the control uh, in there. Let's take a look at how we connect this to the virtual console. So, back to my virtual console. I've taken the time here just to go ahead a little bit, and I'm going to go into run mode for a second by clicking up here. And I've connected slider 1 to my entire front of house group. And the nice thing about this is I can move one slider on my Nano 2. I'm simply moving just this one slider, but it's controlling six different channels. All right, how did I do that? Let's go back into edit mode and say. So, Double click here, and here's your external input. And what I've decided is, um, well, let me get out a generic XX00. We have the wrong one selected. Let me go back to my, let's go input out, but make sure we have the connect, connect one and connect proper profile. <laughs> I'm 
otherwise we'll be messed up. Nano control my version, there we are. Let's go back to virtual console now, go in and edit. Okay, nano my version slider track one. So I've assigned that slider track one to control this. I did the same thing for here. Double click it, that's also be controlled by slider track one. So all of these six virtual faders are being controlled by slider track one. So when I go into run mode, they actually control that. Actually, I'll, they control all of them. You can do as many as you want or as few of you want. Let's do, uh, do another example here. So let's say downstage one, downstage, I just want downstage one, two, three controlled by the next slider. I just double click here. I say choose, go to my nano. I want to go to my sliders, slider track two, boom, it's assigned, okay. Let me do the next one, choose, slider track two, okay. Choose, slider track two, okay. Now, when I go to run mode, those first three, downstage one, two, and three, are gonna be slide controlled by slider number two. And then I can put downstage four and five on slider number three to control them. So you can do any kind of groupings that you would like to do here, however you feel like it would, uh, it would work best for you. Um, and again, these would override, even if you're running the show, and you can override, these will actually override. Now, one thing about that, so let's do a little, we'll bring this up, and I'm gonna do my slider one. You'll notice my light levels come up down here. If I go to my run page, I'm in my run page here, notice that these slider levels are still up. And if I move my slider up and down, right now I am moving my slider up and down, it's not responding because I'm not on that page. So these only work when you're on the page. So I mean, they stayed up because I put them up, but I'm gonna bring them back down now. Now when I go to my run page, they're not up there. And vice versa too, even though I'm on my run page here, if I move the slider right now, it does not change the levels down here. All right, just be aware of that. Um, I could make that work by actually putting the sliders on this page so that they would run with that page. Or, or I could put the sliders over here by themselves and then they would run with any of the pages that I would operate there. Okay, um, let's go back really quickly and I'll just show you another way. Now, if you don't want to take the time to create a profile for your MIDI device, no problem. There is another way to do it and it's called Auto Detect. Let's do our downstage four and five. Let me get out of run mode for a second. I'm gonna do downstage four, double click it. Instead of going to choose, I'm just gonna do auto detect. I'm gonna move slider three and boom, it comes up. Now it gave it a name automatically because I had this in my profile. Other than that, it would just come up with a channel number, but it auto detected that. I'm gonna do downstage five, the same thing. I'm gonna do auto detect. I'm gonna move slider three, slider track three, okay. So now when I go to run mode, slider three is going to do downstage four and five. So if you don't want to control, create a profile, you can just go in your inputs and outputs, just select the profile, just select uh, generic MIDI right there, and then just go through and do auto detect on all of your controllers and you can do that. Um, all right, let's take a look at buttons real quick. So I'm going to go to this, I need to go back to, uh, edit mode. Um, this is where this is kind of neat here. So I'm going to use my playback controls from my Nano Control 2 to actually do my Q page here, my Q list. Um, let's see how we can do that. So double click, um, playback. All right. The play pause control and the stop control. So again, I can either go choose and bring it up and I can do my play button, which is there, this is my play button. Um, my stop control, I can do choose, go to my nano control, let me look for the stop button, which is there, okay. Um, I can go to next cue, choose, um, I would like that to be my forward button and uh, previous cue, I would like this to be my backward button. 
or I would call it the reverse on here. Okay? All right, so those are all assigned right now. So if I go into run mode here, I can use my play button right here to start the sequence. Press my play button, we're off and going. Now remember here, you don't want to keep hitting the play button because it won't do anything. Uh, if you hit the play button again, it will pause because it's activating this button down here. So play, pause, play, pause. If I want to go to the next cue, I need to do my forward button. So I've assigned my forward button here to be that. Next cue, next cue, next cue. Got a little messed up here, so I'm going to hit my stop button by hitting stop on here, and it stopped the whole cue list. Go back, hit my play button, restart the list again. We're here. Okay, just going to close out one more time, restart. We just got a little bit confused by jumping around, but here we go. Play, we're on scene one, next, and again I'm using my nano control, I'm using my next button, next button, next scene, next scene, previous scene, using my back button, so you can see how you can assign the buttons very, very easily there. Um, I could have assigned this slider here. Let's close out for a moment. So running functions, yeah, just go ahead and stop them. Let me go on here again. There's that slide fader here. If I want to do, I'll just do an auto detect on this real quick. I'm going to do slider 5, slider track 5, page 3, okay. Now when I go into run mode here, and I'm going to start out, I'm going to have my nano up, I'm going to hit my run, my playback button. So we're into the scene. Now I'm going to use slider 5 as a fader here. We just went from, now I'm in Q3 going to 4. So you can use the old fashioned and just moving slider 5 up and down. So I'm moving this slider here, 5 up and down, fading from scene to scene. The old fashioned cross fade by hand. So you can actually do that. Works really, really cool. Let me just stop for a moment. So we have some functions running. Just tell it to quit so that we come off down here. Looks like we have some, some lights on. I don't know if we left some lights on from back here. We have something going on here, but there are some lights on from somewhere. Could be, uh, let's check my simple desk here. Yep. All right. Looks like we have some lights on here down here. So I'll pull those down. Accidentally left some lights turned on. Always go back and check this simple desk if you happen to get some things here happening. So, okay. Virtual console again. And put our run mode once. Up, oh, wrong page here. Up and down. There we are out. Yeah, sometimes you just got to make sure that you've got all these sliders down and you're not getting some information from somewhere or if you're in a scene. Um, also, that could be because I was in scene one. If you close out of the queues, and you've got lights coming on down here, it's probably because in the functions menu I've got scene one selected. So if I go to scene up here, that closes them out. That's another thing you want to look for. If you've got lighting that's coming on, it probably means in your functions menu you've got something selected. All right, fix that up. All right, uh, really quickly, selecting buttons here. Scene one, so I just double click on my button, say that I want to choose this. This is going to be, um, let's see, my buttons. It's going to be the solo button on track one that's going to pull up scene one. Um, scene two, choose. It's going to be the solo, uh, the mute button on track one. So mute track one. Okay. So basically I just did the solo button and the mute button. Um, I'll do the next one by auto detect. Okay. Let's do a uh, comic. We're going to do I'm going to press this button here, the record button track one, but I'm going to do auto detect. The record button says record track one, OK. So now when I do uh, run mode, bring this up, I can use the solo, mute, and record button to bring up scene one. Let me slide this over so we can see there is lighting coming on. Scene two. Scene three. Back to scene one. Scene two, scene one, scene two, scene three. So I've used this before where I had an entire button MIDI con uh, controller and used that to do like busking in a show. 
Um, so yeah, many, many different ways you can use this. If you're doing moving lights, you could put your X and Y pan on the rotary knobs up here. Um, or you could put them on the sliders, whichever way you want to do it. So if I had a um, X and Y location widget up here for a, a, a moving light, I could do that. And I can um, set some scenes that are controlled by these buttons. So again, you can do a whole busking thing with this. Uh, or again, if you're doing like a concert situation and you want some certain lighting scenes that you can bring up, and then you also want some independent control of lighting, you can do a mixture of everything on there, which gives you a lot of different flexibility, um, particularly if you're doing something like a, a concert where you don't know what songs are coming up and you need to be able to put certain lighting situations up and be able to grab them in a, at an instant and just make them happen. So, All right, if you have any additional uh, questions about this or if you have a controller that you want me to look at or even a controller you want me to create a profile with, uh, take a look at my uh, web page here and just contact me through email and be glad to help out.